the mysterious parallel of 30 degrees north miraculously gave birth to the civilizations of ancient Egypt, Sumeria, the Indus Valley in China, which is a great wonder in the history of world civilization. Of course, Langzhou is the city that represents the entry of Chinese civilization onto the international stage. In 1936, Shi Xinggong, a 25-year-old local of Liangzhu town, Yuhang, discovered some pieces of black pottery in a dried-up pool of Qi Pan Fan, which opened up the door to archaeological research on Liangzhu relics, a center of ancient civilization that was prosperous for a time and had a long-lasting influence, gradually unfolded in front of us. In 1959, following the tradition of naming a culture, after a site of discovery, the famous archaeologist Sha Nai coined the term Lanju culture. In 1973, during an excavation at site in Cao Xie Shan, Wu County, Jiangsu, archaeologists discovered Tong, Yu, Bi, and other jade sacrificial artifacts for the first time in a cemetery that was typical of the Liangzhu culture style. In 2007, archaeologists discovered city walls with Mo Jiao Shan Palace at the center, which proved the existence of Liangzhu culture. In 2015, Based on excavations and analysis by various parties, it was confirmed that there was an ancient hydraulic system consisting of 11 dams outside the north and the west of ancient Lamju. This ancient hydraulic system consisted of a number of man-made dams and natural mountain spillways such as high dams at valley mouths low dams on planks, and long embankments in front of mountains. Based on preliminary estimates, the reservoir of around 13 square kilometers could hold 40 million cubic meters of water. This was a comprehensive system which could prevent floods and store water to irrigate farmland, regulate the water system, and transport water, among other things. It not only offered ancient people in Liangzhu stable and peaceful lives, as they did not have to worry about flooding, but also facilitated rapid development of agriculture, especially rice culture, by virtue of the advanced irrigation system. From 2010 to 2012, archaeological teams discovered a large amount of carbonized rice weighing about 13,000 kilograms in a shallow hole on the eastern slopes of Mo Jiao Shan Palace of ancient Liangzhu. Again in 2017, piles of carbonized rice were discovered in the ruins of Chi Zhong Temple which weighed at least 200,000 kilograms, based on a conservative estimate. Various archaeological findings show that plows were first used for planting rice in Liangzhu agriculture, and rice production was well developed. With adequate food, ancient people in Liangzhu established a centralized community and were in a place to support craftsmen. Gradually, they created the splendid Liangzhu culture. Through many connotations and details of Liangzhu relics are still not completely and clearly manifested due to the limited scale of archaeological excavations. The four main man-made relics of the city, the peripheral hydraulic system, 
hierarchical symmetries, and others and Lianzhu jade objects, which imply a system of jade usage. Together show that about 4,300 to 5,300 years ago, around the Lake Tai area at the lower reaches of the Yanzi River in China, there was an early regional state that was the center of power and religion at that time. Combining religion with kingship, it was supported economically by rice farming and had a sophisticated social division of labor. Social hierarchy, urban civilization, and unified religion. Lianzhu has not only left a conspicuous mark of Chinese civilization on the mysterious parallel of 30 degrees north, but has also become a sacred land that proves 5,000 years of Chinese civilization. Shi Shi Ying, deputy director of the Lianzhu Relics, administrative office in Hangzhou, and grandson of Lianzhu culture's discoverer Shi Xin Gong, is now a conservator of Lianzhu culture. Every day, he is busy inspecting the conservation zone. The city relics of Lianzhu cover a large area of land. The area of the relic zone and the buffer zone together is over 110 square kilometers. The key control zone and the surrounding urban landscape control zone make up over 40 square kilometers. It is not an easy task for conservators to implement protection policies and ensure effective supervision and maintenance on such a huge scale. Today, he is going to visit a villager's house in the conservation zone to measure and inspect the orientation, location, area, and height of the house he's building. Lao 那么我们以后复合的话,它穿面积了或者移位了,那么是不是老百姓增加它的那个损失呢? leaving the first villager's house, Xu Xi Ying has to the next one. He comes to the conservation zone, whatever the weather is like. This is an endless job, with no time to idle away. His inconspicuous devotion carries a lofty mission and pursuit. It is a mission for Xi Shi Yang and other conservators of Lianzhu culture relics <laughs> to find a way that can balance development with protection, find harmony between man and nature, and between Lianzhu relics and the indigenous people in the process of wiping away the dust that has been sleeping on Lianzhu for millennia while also polishing Liangzhu's history of evolution. As Shi Xingdong's grandson, Shi Shi Yang has taken over his grandfather's work. Their predestined relationship with Liangzhu has been unbroken for over 80 years. This heavy burden is not only a responsibility, but more of an inheritance and development of the spirit of the ancestors. Nowadays, Lanju culture relics are systematically and effectively protected by government-led policies and regulations. 
while science-based technological exploration sets a new global standard in protecting Lamju culture relics. This is the southern wall of Lamju culture relics, which shows the public a site of archaeological excavations. But the large amount of excavated earth poses new challenges for the protection work. 呃，针对这个现场展示点呢，我们目前是有采取一些呃补水措施，还有面层处理，还监控它的土壤温湿度等等的保护措施。接下来我们将会针对这个土遗址进行一个比较深入的一个保护工程项目。呃，目前呢，在全世界来说，对于土遗址保护都没有一个特别通用的一个范例的保护规范吧。所以这个也将是我们针对南方。潮湿环境下土遗址保护的一个有效探索。The workers are spraying water on the earth as a way of controlling the moisture levels. Conservators of ancient Lanzhou relics monitor the earth's moisture based on the humidity of the environment in damp and rainy Jiangnan. In order to prevent the exposed earth from cracking and mildewing, which is something that have been constantly working towards, what's more, the application of modern technology on daily monitoring and inspections provides a better protection for Lanzhou relics. 对我们梁卓古城遗址一百一十四平方公里都会进行监测，包括我们遗产区和缓冲区。然后我们会采用人工巡查以及无人机，还有我们遥感影像等方式进行巡查以及监测啊和数据采集。This is the inspection center, which is now inspecting the Lao Hu Ling relic site as one of the display sites. Lao Hu Ling is at the center of protection work, since its earth profile is exposed to the air. Apart from setting HD cameras, thermal infrared sensors, and many weather stations to do scientific monitoring, conservators also inspect the relic in person and collect data once a week in order to ensure protection is continuous. And prompt. In addition, real-time IoT plus GIS monitoring, which uses mapping and geographic information systems, integrates the ground, air, and space of the conservation zone during routine inspections. Precise grid monitoring is created by adding all relic elements and inspection tasks to the base map. Which consists of a large amount of geological data about the relics. This not only ensures safety monitoring of the relics and the natural environment, but also provides a blueprint for protecting similar relics around the world. This man, who is also busy inspecting the conservation zone. And checking the ground with his colleagues is Kang Hong Guo. He is the director of Gangnam Village of Lanzhou. People in charge of Lanzhou relics protection have been working on a long-lasting and effective management and protection system to put Lanzhou relics under better management and encourage. As many locals in conservation zone as possible to understand, support, and participate in the protection work. Kang Hong Guo and Ganan Village are examples of quickly changing perceptions and rising protection awareness. In 2006, Kang Hong Guo's family began to build a house on a base. Approved by the government. During the construction, they were surprised to discover some precious bee jade. Kang Hong Guo immediately contacted the protection department and handed in the jade. After a salvage excavation by the Cultural Relics Bureau, 
the relics and symmetry under the base were prevented from being damaged, though construction was delayed, and the family had to wait for the revised layout plan to be approved. Kang Hongguo thought it was worthwhile. Kang Hongguo is not just somebody who protects relics, but is also somebody who encourages villagers to participate in protection.第一个就是首先我要遵循那个文物报告就是要必须就是农村农民啊借房之前写好土地之前进行文物开采第二个呢引导村民呢建立一户一井的就是胜利式污水处理池这样呢给他们生活带来不便但是呢我们也会合理的